I'm Greg Cronholm with the Texas Cooperative Extension Service. Today I wanted to talk to you about plant bug sampling. One of the oldest methods used has been the sweep net uh, for sampling plant bugs. Typically it's used early in the season uh, to detect adult migration into the field. In, the, in my samplings, I have found that it's not as effective for finding nymphs of the cotton flea hopper or the ligus bug. And I will show you the method that we use for for sweep netting. Okay, to show you the sweep net method, we use a 15 to 18 inch hoop, typically, and we come down across the top of the plant and get as much as that plant into the area of this net to be sampled. And I will show you that as I walk towards you. After one completes their sweeps, they need to take their hand and close off the bottom of the net to retain the insects that are inside. Once they've done this, they can gradually open up the net, looking for the plant bugs as they move to the top. Examine each leaf that has come off the plants, looking for the small nymphs that might be on those. Here we have an assortment, a cotton flea hopper nymph here, a bead army worm, a cotton flea hopper adult, and so you can see that we can pick up a number of different kinds of insects by this method. But again, mainly used for adult sampling in cotton. The next method I'd like to show you for plant bug sampling is called the beet sheet. Historically, this method's been used in soybeans, but we have also used it in cotton for plant bug sampling. The typical sheet measures approximately 42 inches by 36 inches along the dial rods. These dial rods are slid in to each side so that the sheet can be spread from one side of the row to the other. The reason it's 42 inches is because you've got a swag down in the center of the furrow that takes up another couple of inches on 40 inch row cotton, which this is. Next I'd like to talk to you about the colors. Historically, beet sheets have been white, and this is what we've used for years, but starting about five or six years ago, we found that the darker color, black, is much better for sampling for plant bugs. Before we had the black sheets, we would dye our white ones black or a blue color. And uh, this made for a much better black background for detecting the small nymphs on the beet sheets. First in star ligus bugs and first in star flea hoppers are very difficult to see on the white background. Therefore, we have been using these black beet sheets for the last four to five years that are commercially available uh, for us. When using this beet sheet, you take it and spread it to each side of the row. To sample, you're going to take 18 inches of plant material on each side. We're not going to use the full 30 or 36 inches of length of this sheet. The reason why is because if we go all the way to the edges of the sheet, many of our insects will fall off into the dirt and will be very hard to detect. Therefore, we try to get approximately the, the center 18 inches of the plants. We take one side at a time, vigorously shake, and beat it onto the beet sheet. Then move it back. Remove the leaves, the squares, and all the uh, other foreign plant material, and then count the beneficials, the small pirate bugs, and the ligus bugs, the flea hoppers, and whatever else falls on the sheet. After you have beat the other side, you will do the same thing. Count the insects that have fallen into your beet sheet and record this information on the card that you have carried out into the field for each beet sheet sampling. Typically, we like to do 10 beet sheets per site, 
and after you get these you can summarize your total counts for your uh, 30 row foot of sampling. Next I would like to talk to you about using beet buckets for sampling for ligus bugs and cotton flea hopper. Now the same bucket that was used for the beneficials can also be used for sampling for your plant bugs later in the season. We have purchased buckets of this size, usually about a 16 quart bucket, and um, we've had all different colors used for our field scouts, from white to tan to ones that are a neutral color to ones that are a pale blue color. Our scouts have indicated to us that the white sometimes is very difficult to see the first instar nymphs of the ligus bug or the flea hopper and uh, therefore we have typically purchased this coloration in order to be able to have the contrast of the very pale colored plant bug against the tan. This is the color I prefer. Some of my field scouts, as I mentioned before, prefer the light blue color. They say it's much easier for them to see the first and second instar nymphs. Any of these bucket styles can be successfully used once you learn how to use them. In plant bug sampling, since we're collecting both adults and nymphs, we don't put as many samples per, per bucket before we look at it. We found that when we did three to five samples that we had too many of the adults flying out by the time the scout looked in it. Therefore, what we do is look at one whole plant in this beet bucket and then we count the ligus adults, the cotton flea hopper adults, because those are the things that fly out first. And then we allow the insects in the bottom to recover. The very small nymphs often are stunned by the beating process. And until they move, it's very hard to detect them on these lighter colored surfaces. Therefore, we tell the scouts to count to 20 to 30 seconds before they start counting nymphs. This allows all the very tiny nymphs to recover and to begin to move. If they're not moving, they're extremely difficult to detect in the plant material that's in the bottom of your bucket. Just like with the beneficial sampling for the plant bug sampling, we take the plant, bend it over, and rapidly feed it into this bucket. Now once we've done that, we bring it upright we look for any ligus adults or flea hopper adults that are scampering or trying to fly out through the top. You must be very quick to observe these adult plant bugs before they escape from your bucket because even walking a few feet down the row, they may get away from you. Now you can also combine this sampling method with your beneficial sampling if you haven't done that previously in the season. Another method for sampling plant bugs is using the visual method. This method takes much more experience than any of the other three methods we have talked about previously. The sampling of whole plants can be done by starting at the terminal and working your way down looking for the small nymphs of the cotton flea hopper or the ligus bug. They tend to congregate in the upper half of the plant. Sometimes when you're doing a visual inspection, especially when this plant is still attached to the ground, when you begin to sample at the top, these plant bugs will move down the stem all the way to the base of the plant and sometimes even scurry to the ground. If you're very, very careful, you can start at the bottom of the plant. This keeps the plant bugs from moving down lower on the plant, especially the nymphs. And each leaf you're gonna take and examine and look on the underside of the leaf for the small nymphs. They tend to like to get next to the leaf veins here, and they also like to hide at the leaf petiole where it attaches to the stalk. And so you're gonna work your way up the plant doing a visual inspection. Also, if you have squares on the plant at the time, um, you're gonna open those up and look for the small nymphs inside these squares. And you'll continue to do that on up the plant, looking here at these veins for the small nymphs. Then when we get to the terminal area, you need to dissect this area and prod it apart either with a pencil or a knife and look in here. 
This is a very favorite spot for first and second instar nymphs of the cotton flea hopper to hide. Also, when the cotton is of the hairy type, like uh, some of our uh, paymaster varieties are, then these nymphs are very adapted to hiding in the hairs of that cotton. Now, the visual method is one that we commonly do not use, and the reason why is because it is time consuming, plus it takes very good experience or many years of experience to be able to detect these nymphs at all their hiding locations on that plant. Therefore, in our field scouting programs, we do not have our field scouts do visual inspections for cotton flea hopper or ligus bugs because of the inability to de be able to detect the populations that are actually out in the field. This should be reserved for uh, consultants that have many years of experience.